Hello, I am Rex Busterfield and I'd like to welcome you to a video about my Quilcom Rex Tree. This type of instrument was invented by a guy called Mark Stevens in 1967 and he didn't name it but percussionist Emil Richards decided to call it a Mark Tree. It's also often referred to as a chime bar or bar chimes. I decided to have um, a bit of an ego trip with this and call my synthesizer plugin the Rex Tree. The introduction uh, video had sounds all made with single instances of the Rex Tree which were recorded and then layered together. So I don't need to run through all the presets because I hope that gives you some idea of the different noises you can get from this plugin. From what I found, all the available plugins which simulate this instrument, most are sample based and all of them use the keyboard to trigger individual chimes. But in this case, I decided to have an alternative control method, which to me feels uh, better. So I'll demonstrate how to play this plugin. You can use the mouse to hover over the chime bars. And you can use the mouse to click and drag on the bar at the top to jangle all of them randomly. In addition to that, you can sweep through the chimes using the mod wheel on your MIDI keyboard. And you can use the pitch band wheel to nudge the top bar. And you can use any combination of these control methods at the same time. So if I place the mod wheel in the middle, hover in the middle, I can then take the mod wheel down and the mouse up. So personally I feel that gives a, a more natural feel to playing the instrument rather than sliding up and down the, the white notes on your MIDI keyboard which can be uh, quite painful with some keyboards. So now I'll briefly go through the other main controls on this synth. Here we set the pitch of the lowest notes and all the other notes will track with it. If we want to use the notes on the MIDI keyboard, we change over from knob to notes to MIDI. The spread sets the tuning gap between individual chimes. So when it's set to one, it's one semitone between them, but we can alter the spread um, either continuously or in musically useful steps. So that's one, two, let's go to three. For the envelope, we simply have attack and decay. The attack has a fairly narrow range, but it affects the sort of hardness of the striking of the, uh, the chime bars. Up 
personally favour five milliseconds. And the decay is the... Well, it's the decay. Few uh, real instruments have a bar that comes down to damp um, the chimes. This is not commonly seen, but I provided um, a button that you hold down to damp the sound. That also dampens the uh, swinging simulation. The span up uh, simulates the idea of having more than one uh, finger playing, and this sets the gap between uh, fingers. If we go down to zero, then there's a single finger with, with no uh, span. Increase it to one. It gets more complex. We can go right. If we go to maximum, we get a repeat. So the fingers would be 12 bars apart. So you hear repeats as the second finger comes in. Now the swinging itself is uh, very much an uh, approximation because to process each individual bar with its own swing speed and collision would be a fantastic um, challenge. Um, so these two knobs uh, process uh, the control of the triggers. They're not audio delays, but they work a little bit like audio delays. So the swing you can think of as um, like the feedback in an audio delay. By the way, I tried audio delays and it didn't work. It sounded dreadful, uh, which is why I processed the triggers. So about 30% I think is quite nice. We go down to zero. We get no swing. Increase it, we get... And interestingly, if you go up to 100%, the sound never dies. If the weight of each bar um, increases, but its length remains the same, it won't change its pitch. Um, but I can simulate the weight, which is effectively like the delay time as opposed to the feedback. Times one means as designed. If we increase it. The swing is slower, up to a maximum, which is not very realistic. These two buttons increase the complexity of the collisions. So if I turn the span down to zero, and then I turn up down collide, the collisions will be in the direction of whether it's sweeping up or down. Speed collide means that when you move the mouse of the module faster, you get a more complex set of semi-chaotic collisions. So without... And then with... And 
And of course, if you have both of them, then it gets very complex. Possibly too chaotic. The timbre panel is where you set the um, the harmonics, the four pulses you can set, fundamental, F2, 3 and 4. You can set the ratios here and the levels of those pulses there. Some of the presets demonstrate uh, different timbres. Now, would you believe it, but after looking at this thing for hours, I've just noticed these two knobs aren't aligned correctly on the front panel, so I shall correct that for the uh, release version. So that's my Quilcom Rex tree for you. It's uh, a novelty device and I would be surprised and delighted if you ever find a use for it. Um, there's more information in the uh, user guide of course and uh, a little bit in the background info. So uh, until the next time, bye!